What's happening, Fish and Friends? Welcome to another episode. Spring is coming up. It was 36 here today, and it feels amazing. I've had a bunch of people asking, what are some of your favorite spring baits? I've also had people asking for me to bring back the old rod reel line relationship video. So we're going to go over everything today, lipless crankbait related. I'm going to go over some of my favorite lipless crankbaits. I'm going to go over colors. We're going to talk about the combos that I like to fish them on, rod, reel, line, all that good stuff right there. And it'll even give you a few tips for fishing these babies when spring comes up in your ear because I tell you what, lipless crankbaits are killer for spring fishing. Okay, let's start out with some of my favorite lipless crankbaits to throw. You cannot talk about lipless crankbaits without first mentioning the Bill Lewis rattle trap. Now, a lot of people call this type of lure a rattle trap because these have been around so long and they work so well. You're gonna find a little bit different sounds with some of the different, the different lipless crankbaits, a little bit different shapes, sizes, but I mean, this is one that has worked for a long time. So the Bill Lewis rattle trap, you can often find these on sale. They come stock with Mustad triple grip hooks. You don't have to change out any of the hardware, and I'm always a fan of that when they put good components on a lure. So next up, one you've probably heard a lot of people talk about, the Strike King Red Eye Shad. Now again, this is a staple of many anglers. Uh, it's really gonna depend on who you talk to and what type of lipless crankbait they like most. Like I said, some are gonna have a little bit different sound. Um, there's some of the, you know, the more expensive, the Lucky Crank LV500s. Some of those are better for, you know, kind of deep water jigging and stuff. I'm gonna touch more on the shallow, 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 shallow water lipless crankbaits. That's more of what I do. I don't really do like the deep water jigging, so keep that in mind as we go on. But uh, the Red Eye Shad and all these, usually I'm throwing either a smaller quarter ounce or the bigger half ounce. Those are both my go-to sizes um, when I'm throwing a lipless crank. The Berkeley War Pig is another one that I've picked up and used the past few years. Solid crank, again, comes with good hooks. The Berkeley Fusion hooks on here. Uh, again, quarter ounce, half ounce. They've got all kinds of different colors. Um, but I'm a big fan of those. Brady, I know my guy Brady, it's, it was like the bloody shad or whatever. Uh, he caught, I don't know how many fish in one day on one of those. He loves that kind as well. So another good one. Um, you've all heard me talk about the Cotton Cordell Super Spot. You can usually find these really cheap on sale. Walmart used to have them for like a $1.99 or whatever in like the little clearance bins down below. Um, so I bought a, a crap ton of these from Walmart when they had them in there. Gold. Um, we're going to go over colors here in a second, but they had a bunch of just, you know, kind of the plain colors. So last one is the Booyah series. Now I got, I don't know how many of these when Gander Mountain went out of uh, business. They've got like the regular rattle on these. This is the Hard Knocker. Um, now the Red Eye Shad, they've got one similar, the, the Hard Knocker or a One Knock. It's just like one big ball in there instead of a bunch of BBs. So it gives a little bit harder clack sound to it. Different sound. Some people prefer different sounds. Some people say the one knocker mimics um, a crawfish more. I don't know. I've had luck on both. Um, it really just depends. So those are some of the brands I like. Now when we're talking about colors, red of course in spring I've got one there. Never go wrong with the Rayburn red. There's all kinds of different red variations in all these lipless crankbaits. Red is an awesome color in the spring. I don't know what it is. There's multiple things I've read about it. Maybe we'll do a video. Um, I also saw Mikey Balls put out a video on it. I haven't got to watch it yet, but he's got an awesome channel. Check his out if you haven't. Um, but red, red or orangish, some sort of reddish orange craw deal is great during spring. Next is gonna be my gold chrome. Gold chrome is great in dirty water when it's sunny out. Um, now kind of the opposite of that, in cleaner water, especially when you're trying to mimic like bait fish, just your regular chrome is good. So anytime you've got a sunny day, I've got a, some sort of chrome color to get that flash in there. For my fellow pond fishermen out there, some sort of bluegill, green sunfish, um, even perch, some sort of color like that is great in the ponds that have, you know, obviously the main forage for bass is bluegill. Um, so some sort of pattern like that, especially if you can get away with it um, around spawn, post-spawn, um, in some of those ponds that don't have vegetation, bluegill imitations are great when those bluegill get up on beds. Bass are done uh, with their whole spawn thing and they're gonna get revenge on the bluegill for pestering them. So they'll be up uh, shallow feeding on those. I don't have a sexy shad, but like a white or a sexy shad, chartreuse sexy shad, um, especially my local lake, for whatever reason, chartreuse sexy shad uh, is killer. I caught, I don't remember that one year, like a three, a four, a six and a half, um, all on a little quarter ounce cotton cordell sexy shad colors. There is no sense in buying a lure that costs five bucks and not changing hooks if it has crummy hooks. I'm sorry, Strike King. I absolutely love your crankbaits, uh, but the hooks on them are just, they're, they're suspect. 
a lot of the times they're not that sharp and they're pretty thin wire. You can see they're pretty thin wire hooks. Same thing with these Lunkerhan. I didn't like these lipless. They didn't run right for me, but look at that. They have little size hooks on there. This is a half ounce lipless crankbait. Little size six treble hooks. And those are small. Um, so I usually change my treble hooks out. Uh, oftentimes, where is it? I go to a Mustad triple grip. That's what comes stock on the Bill Lewis deals there. You can see it says Mustad there. It comes stock with the Mustad triple grip. I love those. Now those are like an EWG style. Um, great for when the fish are really eating the lipless. Uh, the hookup, once you get them hooked up, I feel like you keep them longer with an EWG hook like that. Now, um, the hooks like on these, you can see on the regular Strike King there, those are just regular round bin treble hooks. Um, you can go with Owner Stingers, VMC makes some good ones, those Berkeley Fusions I talked about like on the War Pig. There's a number of different options out there, but don't go cheap on hooks. If you've already spent five bucks, it's not gonna kill you to spend 60 cents more and put good hooks on. Um, I've been heartbroken with going with the, the Cotton Cordell uh, Super Spots because those brass hooks on there are crummy. So don't be afraid to change out your hooks. It's the only thing to keep your lure attached to the fish. Now that we've colored the lipless crankbaits and the colors, how about the rod reel line? Well, for me, I like a medium power usually or a soft medium heavy. Now this is going to depend on the company. It's tough. I'll show you some of the ones I use and kind of explain my reasoning behind it. Now, one of my favorites that I've used is the Daiwa Tatula rod. Now this is a shallow cranking rod. Um, when I'm throwing lipless crankbait, a lot of times I don't go with a super duper soft, like dedicated crankbait rod. So like that Lose David Fritz crankbait rod you've seen me use. Very parabolic, very soft. That's fine in open water uh, if I'm just like yo-yo in a lipless. But when I get around grass, when you start to get to some vegetation coming up, I want something that's still got a soft tip to it, but a decent amount of backbone. So a lot of times I'll just go with a medium power, fast action rod. You can see that what that says here going to be rated for lures up to three quarter ounce. It's going to depend on the company, but uh, a rod around in this. So like that Tatula rod, this is a, a cranking rod, so it's not extremely soft because it is a topwater shallow crank rod. Um, it's not like a deep crank where it's going to be super, super soft. Now, another example will be that Okuma Psycho Stick that you all just saw. Again, you can see the rating there. It's the rating I like. This happens to be 5.8s, pretty close to that three quarter ounce rating. That's what most of your medium powers are going to be right around in that range. But this rod is decently soft. I had a number of people say, ooh, that'd be a good topwater rod. And that's usually kind of where I go for my lipless crankbaits. I don't want a super spongy crankbait rod where it just flexes all the way clear down to the middle. Um, because believe me, once you get in some of that grass and you're trying to pop it over grass or pop it over rocks, I'm trying to bang these into as many things as I can. And when you get a real, real, real soft rod like that, it, it kind of makes it tough. Now you can fish them that way. Um, I have fished them on crankbait rods, like I said, but it's really up to you. You're going to have to find what you like. Um, now you can also control that with the line. So covered rod going to the line. Generally, I'm going to throw 100% fluorocarbon on there. So don't pay attention. This is 20 pound, but um, something like this, this is the P-Line Tactical. I've been using that uh, the past year and man, it is a super nice line. It's soft. There's a number of other different lines out there. Pick a fluorocarbon that you like. Generally 15 pound is what I'm going to go with. Um, I know some guys that go lower, it's up to you. But when I'm fishing this around, uh, you know, especially shallow rocks, I might be bumping it into wood or bouncing it over rocks. Um, I don't want to go, you know, with super low eight pound line in case I get caught up in some of that. That's just me. I tend to go a little bit on the side of heavier line whenever I can get away with it. Um, but it's kind of up to you. Something else, I mean, if you've got a medium power rod with a fast tip and you feel like it's just a little bit too stiff, you can also go over to a monofilament. So you all know I love the Trilene XL and the Red Box. This line has more stretch than your fluorocarbon, so you're going to feel it more when um, you know you come over something that's going to be a little bit more spongy feeling. So you can kind of play with your you know your system between the rod and the line to get a little bit softer feel. So a lot of times guys will go with just a regular fast action rod, medium power fast action. Uh, go with mono. I know my dad still loves mono for cranking. That's just kind of his deal. So find what works for you. Another one that I've uh, had people ask about is the floral clear. Now, this does not have as good abrasion resistance as 100% uh, fluorocarbon. But the good part about this stuff is uh, it's a good cranking line. It's soft. I know that's something people often talk about. Whoa, with fluorocarbon is that, you know, it's wiry, stiff. Um, a soft line like that, like the floral clear, it allows you to load up on those fish. So you get the bite and you start to feel that rod load up before you're really setting into the hook. Whereas if you were using straight braid, which I've tried before, 
um, you're going to end up ripping holes in fish. I remember a couple years ago I made the video on that, and every single fish I caught it was a medium heavy rod with just braid on it. It was one of my topwater rods, and every single fish I caught had holes ripped in its lip, um, and really they could have shaken that hook out, and that was the problem. It was too stiff of a rod with braid that has no stretch in it. So you've kind of got to play with that, find what you like, um, but those are kind of the, the rods and reels I use. Um, I've got a clip of me using this. I've had a whole bunch of people asking about this, the Roxani combo. Um, so if you get a rod and reel combo like this, I think that reel is like 179 regularly, uh, and the combo is like 199 So that's a $20 rod. Um, seems kind of strange, but a lot, a lot of times those less expensive rods um, are going to be a little bit softer on the tip, and that's a medium heavy. Um, but still feels, you know, soft. That's a great half ounce lipless uh, rod right there. You don't need it to be super duper uh, sensitive because you want that fish to bite it, load up a little bit, and then you're pulling into them. Okay, now when it comes to the reel, I like a seven speed reel. So for example, this is my SLX. That's a seven two to one speed ratio reel. Um, I like that speed and right around seven to me is my favorite. Uh, I know a lot of guys, for example, Jim, Tackle Junkie, um, he prefers a six-speed reel, like a 6.5 or whatever. That's really going to depend on you. Um, I don't feel like there's much of a difference between this and a six-speed. Um, I know people like to go with a slower speed if they reel, tend to reel really fast. Um, also, people like to go with a lower speed because they feel you, know, you can get more torque, more actual power when you get them and stuff. Um, but when I'm throwing a lipless, especially during spring, oftentimes I'm yo-yoing it and taking up slack, yo-yo, or I'm literally burning that and popping it. Um, last year, me and my buddy Nate, uh, we were fishing a, a mud line with red lipless crankbaits, and I was fishing them way quicker than I thought. It was still cold water. And um, to my surprise, they wanted it quick for the most part. I mean, I was reeling good. Um, so, you know, for a lipless, you're fishing it shallow. You're often fishing it pretty dang quick. Um, so I don't want like a really slow, you know, five to one, gear ratio reel. Me personally, I don't. Um, I think that seven speed is perfect. You can fish it fast. If you're yo-yoing, you can take up slack line. Uh, if you need to fish a little slower, you can just kind of slow down. So again, that's going to depend on you, but I think uh, a seven speed is perfect for lipless cranks. Okay, so a couple tips for fishing lipless crankbaits. Number one, I've kind of talked through it, but make sure you're making contact with things. I remember years ago when I was fishing lipless crankbaits, one thing for me was just cast them out kind of like a spinnerbait and reel them in. You know, when I, when I first started with that, um, that was kind of my deal. And I learned with a spinnerbait, you want to hit wood, um, you know, knock into things, make it kind of, you know, do something different for those fish to react. And I never really picked up with it uh, on the lipless. I didn't, you know, have as much confidence in it. I'm like, am I throwing the right spots? Is this, you know, working? What am I doing? Um, but after I started banging that into rocks, when you're fishing a lipless shallow, you've got to remember those springtime bass are coming up shallow. The males are going to make beds. Females are going to be coming in behind. Great time for bank anglers because you can fish shallow. Those fish are up feeding, looking for food. Um, so bang into rocks, stumps. Lipless crankbaits don't do all around brush, so I would try to avoid that, but like big logs and such, usually you can hit them and pop it over it, um, but try to make contact. And if you can't make contact with stuff, if you're fishing like a drop-off, put little pops in it or pop it and pause it. Uh, and that kind of comes to my second big tip is vary your different retrieves. So not only just a straight retrieve and bang into stuff, uh, last year, Rand Dizzle and I were fishing a point, windblown point, spring, textbook place, and we were yo-yoing lipless crankbaits, and that's how they wanted it. And for that retrieve, you're literally throwing it out, popping it up like a yo-yo, reeling up your slack waiting, popping it up, so that, that lure is going, and then falling, nose down, falling, nose down. And you're going to vary how hard you pop it up, um, how much you let it sink, like your dead fall rate, and just kind of play with that and vary it up. But, I mean, we got on a, a killer day for me. He was destroying me with the finesse jig that day, and I wanted to go home. Finally, we got on him on a point uh, with red lipless crankbaits, uh, and it destroyed him. I don't know how many fish I caught on that point in like an hour. And then after that hour, they just stopped biting. I don't know if they moved, but um, it was magical, magical hour. That's kind of my third tip is in the spring, you're going to find a lot of bass congregated in certain areas. So like I said, we were on a windblown bank, um, a drop-off, good gradual drop-off there, and we destroyed them. We found a bunch of them, and I know that's one thing for a lot of guys is they want to cover water or, you know, they'll catch one and keep moving on. Uh, you know, you find a log, oh, I caught one off it, I'm going to move to the next spot. Spring is a time when you can find fish bunched up a ton. So, you know, if it's in a pond, there might be a little tree structure there, and you, you can bring that lipless over that tree and catch a bunch of fish. 
a specific rock pile, a specific drop off, a certain point. Um, when you find one, there's a good chance you're going to find a bunch of them staging there and ready to move up shallow and start that whole spawning process. So I can't stress it enough, if you've caught one in a certain area and it feels good, spend a little more time there, chances are there's going to be a few fish there for you to capitalize on. So that's going to do it for me today. Comment below and let me know what you thought of this type of video. Do you want to see more of these? I added some actual fishing footage in. We covered everything from lures, colors, rod, reel, line, a couple tips. Um, I love these type of videos. To me, they're a ton of fun. Uh, I usually get good feedback from you all, so let me know. Comment below and let me know if you would like to see more of these. Um, what kind of lure you want to see next. Finesse jigs, square bow crankbaits, spinnerbaits, one of my favorites. Comment below and let me know. I would love to do more like this. And today's subscribe fishing friend is Fish Tank Frank. Uh, we talk back and forth on Instagram. Great guy. Thank you, sir, for always watching and supporting. And thank you, everybody else, so much for what you do watching me, supporting me. Again, my channel would not be where it is without all of you. So thank you all. It really does mean a lot. But uh, I need to get editing. Enough from me yapping. Get all this put away. And uh, hopefully I'll have another video out in a couple days. So thank you all so very much for watching. And until next time. <laughs>